A quick summary of the anesthesia and these patients. There was made uh, from the Hunter Outcome Study a data collection of 441 um, patients to see whether they had suffered from any um, complications while anesthesia. And you see they had in 22% difficulties with intubation and extubation 3.7%. And most of them, the intubation, 18% of these patients received a surgery and anesthesia before the diagnosis was made. So the specific anesthesiological risk factors in these patients is, first, it's a difficult positioning because the deformity of the chest, the enlarged abdomen and the contractures make it difficult to, to position the patient in the operating theater. Some hunter patients have um, mental retardation, so you have also a limited cooperation of the patient. You have difficult airways, as I showed you before, with the short neck, the dwarfism, the large head. They have a thickened and less flexible tissue in, in the mouth and of the trachea. So if you touch it, you have a problem to find uh, the way for the intubation. The macroglossia makes it difficult to see the, the pharynx and also the cervical spine involvement it makes it difficult to, to perform anesthesia. Also the limited um, cardiorespiratory resources. Before that um, also MPS2 patients have uh, an involvement of the heart. Um, so you have to, to keep in mind that these patients are patients at risk. For postoperative management, you need an intensive care, you need a weaning from the ventilation, and you ha always have to keep in mind that they have, um, or they, they often have a swelling of the um, airways after surgery. The perioperative mortality was 20% um, now, I think, because a lot of experienced centers are performing surgeries, it's much better. So the preoperative evaluation is first to check the cardiopulmonary situation. You need also, again, the multidisciplinary team, a cardiologist who performs an echocardiography and an ECG. You need to know the intubation opportunities, so how is it possible to intubate the patient? Is it possible? What tube do you need? What size? How can you position the patient? So is it possible to lay him straight? What do you have to do? If you have to lie, he should um, be positions on the abdomen that the patient can, can handle this. Then interdisciplinary postoperative care. Is there an intensive care bed and an intensive care um, physician who is taking care of the patient? Is there an ENT physician for a tracheostomy um, standby if necessary? So if you have any complication that there is someone who can immediately react and help the patient and also the emergency management should be written down before. So as I mentioned before, the significant risk due to the airway disease because of the anatomic changes, the macroclossia, the narrowed airways, the short neck and the immobility of the mandibula. The intubation itself is difficult, so always, or we recommend to have always an ENT physician for a tracheostomy standby. The post-operative um, um, edema is very often in MPS2 patients and makes it difficult to extubate. So a lot of anesthesiologists recommend to give some precortisone um, after surgery. You have to avoid the bleedings of the mucosa because the, the mucosa in MPS patients is very vulnerable and um, patients should always be um, observed um, at an intensive care after surgery. So, Anesthesia or, an or in a surgical procedure in MPS patients is not work for only one and the others are looking around. It's really a teamwork, so you need the anesthesiologist who is experienced with MPS patients. You need the ENT physician who is in standby if you need him. You need a surgeon who is aware that he's not, he has not a healthy patient but a patient with a metabolic disease. You need the intensive care unit who is aware of the problems that can occur after surgery and you need someone who is organizing and coordinating that so that everybody knows what to do. 
that it's not possible to make a plan for all that is fitting for all patients, but what you need is you need a plan for each single patient because the heterogeneity of, of the patient is so high so that you really have to think prior surgery how to, the plan should be for each patient. So what we recommend um, how to perform the surgeries in MPS patients is it's always better to have a big medical center who is performing the surgeries, who knows how to are experienced in dealing um, with this high-risk surgical patients. It's always a good idea to combine a lot of surgical procedures in one, so an MRI, for example, in a mental retarded patient, if you need a sedation for an MRI, to, to combine with T-tubes, for example, or the dental surgery with the T-tubes, so that you have only one session of anesthesia. You should talk to the families prior surgery, what can happen, that there is a high risk of complications, and especially what to do when there is any problem. So, if the patient cannot be extubated, are the parents allowed that a tracheostomy is made? So, as I mentioned several times before, carpal tunnel hernia and ENT problems are the most frequent surgical procedures. The surgeons are not really interested in metabolic diseases. I'm a surgeon, so I know my, my specialty, and I know that they, they are not thinking about metabolic diseases or problems. So, you have to inform the surgeon about the difficult problems in these patients. You have to discuss the necessity of each surgery with the families, but also with your colleagues if it's really a necessary surgery. And you always need this multidisciplinary team to, to manage um, these surgeries, even if a small and short surgery in these patients.